And now I'd like to talk about my favorite re-releases this year in 2023 from the Criterion Collection. So uh, the re-release for me is a title that had been or is currently in the Criterion Collection physical media catalog. Uh, but in the occasion of this year, 2023, we saw a new release or re-release or re-emergence of such title. So maybe it was a title that was a previously a spine number title in the Criterion catalog, but then fell out of print, but then now re-emerges uh, in, say, a new Blu-ray or 4K uh, release, etc. So um, that's how I define the re-release for me. Uh, there were so many, uh, so many to choose from, and uh, I think it was a, a very exciting year in terms of, for instance, Criterion uh, re-releasing titles, but then employing, say, the option of the 4K UHD plus Blu-ray combo format to then take some titles and then uh, in, uh, engage with the 4K format in that way. So so uh, utilizing the uh, the newest technology in a manner of speaking uh, to then uh, uh, further uh, further say um, uh, amend or supplement uh, its already ever growing uh, physical media catalog. Uh, so there have been many examples like that. But I have chosen again here for purposes of today my three favorite my three favorite re-releases and my choices might differ from yours. So again, if you have any differing viewpoints, please feel free to let me know in the comment section below. Um, I, as always, I'm always interested to hear what you have to say about this. But anyway, re-releases. So let me ch give you my uh, favorites in in uh, the order of three, two, one. So my third favorite re-release is of a work which is described as being from the year 1973. It is at spine number 745, and uh, this year we had its return from a kind of OOP, out of print status or unavailable status, at least I think so, and then it returned uh, in this wonderful way and uh, using the 4K format to boot. And so I'm speaking of the work which is from Nicholas Rogue, and it is this work, which is Don't Look Now. So I think it was a, a big deal to have this back and uh, not only have it back, but then relying on the 4K format. So having the Blu-ray option being made available again, and then the 4K option uh, for those who might be interested. So it's a terrifying film. It's a chilling film. And and uh, now that it's uh, here to stay in the Criterion Collection catalog, at least uh, hopefully for a long, long time to come, uh, that's wonderful news. And it's one of the, I think it was, uh, for me, just, uh, it was that bit of extra, uh, extra uh, 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 goody uh, feeling or, or goodness that uh, put it into the top three for me. So this is Nicholas, Nicholas Rogue's film, excuse me, which is Don't Look Now. It is now back in the Criterion Collection, now employing the 4K UHD plus Blu-ray 4. My number three of the re-releases, which brings me to my number two of the re-releases. And a similar thing, uh, this had been out of print for a while, as far as I understand it, but now we have the occasion of it returning to the Criterion Collection and in such wonderful form as well, uh, purporting to be based this time on a new 4K digital restoration. Perhaps you might hear a little bit more about this film in some other favorites videos of mine uh, later, but uh, this is a, a title which is given by number 409, and the filmmaker is Terrence Malick, a work from 1978, and it is this. Days of Heaven. Oh, Days of Heaven, excuse me. My second favorite re-release of the year. Again, uh, taken out of, uh, rescued from the OOP depths, or criterion out of print depths in a manner of speaking. And now, uh, not only that, with a very powerful and strong and resilient uh, 4K digital restoration, in my view, it's, it's a very strong one indeed. So, And what a film this is. Captivating, magical, poetic, elliptical. Uh, and it is, uh, it's a, a soap opera drama uh, with uh, all the stakes of heaven and earth uh, intertwined within it. What a powerful film. I love this film very much. One of my favorites from Terrence Malick. So my number two favorite re-release from the Criterion Collection is Days of Heaven. Which brings me to my number one favorite uh, re-release. Uh, and this re-release is a, of a film that currently exists in a Blu-ray uh, from Criterion. In fact, it's a, it's a set, it's a Blu-ray set, but this time Criterion has provided us with an individual release of this film on a 4K UHD and the Blu-ray, 
And then also, in addition to that, Criterion provided an, another film uh, from the same director, and it serves as a type of sequel to this uh, 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 earlier work. And so let me just uh, cut right to the chase. It's this film, this release, The Last Picture Show, and uh, also included with this release, Texas Film. So this is that spine number 549, and this is the 4K UHD plus Blu-ray combo edition. And it also includes on, the, on a Blu-ray, uh, a third disc, or a second Blu-ray disc, or a third disc, it includes the film Texas Film which is a separate film. Texas Phil itself does not get, as far as I understand it, its own spine number, so it's just part of this collection. Um, but still, I think that... Well, let me take this uh, into two parts. So first, the last picture show and this 4K digital restoration and, and the 4K availability of this and make it uh, an individual standout from the Blu-ray set, I think this is a... This is such an important work. This is such a key work in uh, American cinema. In the hands of Peter Bogdanovich and the stars, um, the, the actors here, which are now, this is a legendary cast. You know, Cloris Leachman and Eileen Brennan and uh, Timothy Bottoms, Jeff Bridges, uh, and Sybil Shepard. And oh my goodness, this is legendary, absolutely legendary. And, uh, and it, it's uh, a very much uh, a film that is uh, from the heart. It is tender. It's heartbreaking. Uh, there are moments that are uh, like um, almost surreal, and the comic timing is uh, quite uh, beautiful and poetic. And there, are, there are times also moments where you can feel the melancholy of life and the years that have passed, and some of the characters that are longing for things that are no longer there. Uh, and it's uh, a truly haunting and and heartbreaking and and beautiful work indeed. That is again one of the the all-time classics of uh, American cinema, 1970 cinema, uh, Peter Bogdanovich films. So uh, this is, I think, my favorite. Yes, this is my favorite release or re-release uh, from Criterion of a film that is just uh, so powerful and such a, a strong and uh, uh, unrelenting and uh, unforgettable uh, coming-of-age drama. Uh, from uh, from cast and crew here again, directed by Peter Bogdanovich. And I also should say too that another thing that brought this over for me, uh, which may or may not be a, f a fair point when it comes to comparing with other releases, I grant you that. But again, from my own subjective viewpoint, I have to say that the inclusion of the film Texas Phil as well made this release and this re-release uh, just uh, over the top for me. Now, mind you, I understand Texas Phil itself was never, as far as I understand it, uh, a part of the Criterion Collection proper. So it, it's uh, it's kind of a first time for Texas Phil to be made available this way. But the fact that it's being made available together with this Last Picture Show re-release, and not only that, we get two versions of Texas Phil, the um, the what's known as the original theatrical cut in color, and then the director's cut, which is in black and white, and there's a difference uh, as well in, in terms of a uh, running time, almost thirty minutes uh, difference. That is a that is a uh, monumental stuff. You're getting two films for the price of one for this release, so you're getting your money's worth. I I I feel. And not only that, you're getting two incredibly important films that have an organic link and quality about them. And also, um, I've always been an admirer of The Last Picture Show, but Texasville, I think, is a film that uh, maybe didn't get as much critical claim as, say, The Last Picture Show did. But I think a release like this, and to have a, the ability to re-examine Texasville, or maybe for some to watch Texasville for the first time, this is, I think, a great opportunity to see them back-to-back -back and to see just how organically uh, um, connected and linked Texasville is with the earlier work, The Last Picture Show, thus making it very strong on its own, but also highlighting how different and unique Texasville is. I, I, I'm, I'm just so thrilled and amazed uh, by the inclusion of different versions of the film here, such as to, again, provide the opportunity for a revisit or reassessment, whatever the case may be, or a first-time watch. For me, it's just further solidifying how, how great the film is. Texas was such a great film, and I'm so happy that it's been given this kind of treatment from Criterion, again, within the context of the last Picture Show release, but uh, it makes this release overall, in my eyes, 
uh, so utterly, utterly strong as to be just um, uh, just an utter standout. My favorite re-release this year, 2023, in the Criterion Collection is The Last Picture Show, which is this release, The Last Picture Show plus Texas Film. Texas Film, excuse me. I, uh, sorry about that. My voice gave out at the last there, so I apologize for that. But in any event, those are my three favorite re-releases uh, from this year. So I know there have been many others, many, many other re-releases. Uh, so too many to mention here. And I know I'm, I, I enjoyed all of them in their own way, but if I had to choose three, I would have chosen these. So uh, if your list differs or if you want to have any comments on it, please let me know in the comments section below. As always, I'd love to hear what it is you have to say. But uh, I'll see you at the next video, my dear, dear friends, uh, very soon.